Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red combo deck titled Masked Minotaurs, which features a ton of new cards from Kaldheim, including 22 snow lands in the mana base to enable some of our snow synergies, like Frostbite being able to deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, or Tundra Fumeral adding 3 mana after we cast it to deal 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker. So we've got a ton of early control elements in this deck to stay alive long enough to assemble our 2 card combo of Mask with Nexus from Kaldheim, plus a Death Bell Warcry, an old favorite from Theros, an 8 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 4 Minotaur creature cards with different names and put them on the battlefield, although we don't actually have any Minotaurs in the deck, instead we rely on Maskwood Nexus, a 4 mana artifact saying creatures we control are every creature type, and the same is true for creature spells we control and creature cards we own that aren't on the battlefield. So every single creature in our deck with Maskwood Nexus in play turns into a Minotaur, so in true school be do fashion, all the Minotaurs take off their masks to reveal their true identities, and the villains of this story are gonna be Obosh the Prey Piercer, Terror of the Peaks, Goldspan Dragon, and Hidaro Wandering Monster. So these are the four creatures that we're gonna search up with our Death Bell Warcry. And we've got Terror of the Peaks, a 5 mana 5 4 flying dragon, saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So if we add the total power of the other creatures we're searching up, we can deal 15 damage to the opponent just from our creatures entering the battlefield. But there's more, since one of the creatures that we search up is Obosh the Prey Piercer, saying if a source we control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. And every single creature that we're searching up has an odd converted mana cost, so now all of a sudden Terror of the Peaks is dealing 30 damage to the opponent just from our four creatures entering the battlefield, and that's before we factor in any attack steps, as we have Goldspan Dragon, a 4-4 flying dragon with haste, that when it attacks or becomes a target of a spell creates a treasure token, and we can also sacrifice treasure tokens for double the mana, and then we have Hidaro Wandering Monster, an 8-8 creature with Trample and Haste that can also be cycled for 2 mana if we happen to draw it, and if we cycle Hidaro we get to shuffle it back into our deck instead of putting it into our graveyard, so we can find it later with a Death Bell Warcry. So this is the combo that will usually win the game on the spot. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. We mentioned Frostbite, a 1 mana snow instant dealing 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, but if we control 3 or more snow permanents it deals 3 damage instead. The only snow permanents in this deck are lands, so if we have 3 of these snow lands in play we can deal 3 damage for just 1 mana. Then we also have the full playset of Fire Prophecy, dealing 3 damage to a creature, and then we can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do we also get to draw a card. So this is perfect for putting one of our win conditions back into our library, since we don't really want to draw these, but still put them back into our deck where we can find them instead of actually discarding them, and this can also help smooth out our draws. Then we've got the full playset of Mace Mind Tome, which is also amazing in this deck, helping us cry to assemble the different combo pieces, or draw extra cards if we've got the mana for it, and eventually gains 4 lines as well. Then two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing as a nice dual-faced land that can also be used as a removal spell. And then at 3 mana, full place out of Valakut Awakening, another dual face card that can be played as a tap land, but more often than not we'll be casting Valakut Awakening for 3 mana, an instant that puts any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library, and then we get to draw that many cards plus 1. So we can safely put any of these creatures on the bottom of our library, since we're not actually discarding them, so we can still find them with Death Bell Warcry, and if we happen to draw redundant combo pieces of Mask with Nexus, Iron Crank Feet or Warcry, we can also get rid of them to find the missing combo pieces so very important card in the deck. And then we also have the full playset of Tundra Fumeral, a 3 mana snow sorcery at rare, dealing 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker, and then we get to add colorless to our mana pool for each snow mana spent to cast it, and we don't lose that mana until end of turn. So if we spent 3 snow mana to cast Fumeral, we get all 3 mana back, and we've got a few ways of using that extra colorless mana. Of course we can just cast another spell that requires generic mana, but we can also use it to activate abilities, like drawing a card with our Maze Mind Tome, 
Boom, or potentially activating our Mask with Nexus to make a 2-2 Changeling token, which can also be an alternate win condition if we don't manage to assemble the combo. We can just start making 2-2 tokens with our Nexus, maybe activate our Faceless Haven, which can also turn into a 4-3 creature with all creature types and Vigilance, so that can also help us pressure control decks, or potentially mill decks that happen to mill some of our win conditions, making it more difficult to combo off. And then our final combo piece is Iron Crank Feet to help us turbo out our Death Bell Warcry. If we happen to draw multiple copies of Feet, we can also potentially use it to cast our Mask with Nexus and activate it to make a 2-2 token right away, or potentially use our Maze Mind Tome as another nice mana sink, so that can come up. And then we've got our win conditions, which every now and then we might also just cast if we don't manage to assemble the combo, and especially a Bosch is quite synergistic, making our Frostbite and Fumarole deal additional damage, and Terror of the Peaks and Goldspan Dragon can also just be nice win conditions that can fly over. Goldspan can also make additional mana to help us cast Death Ball Warcry if we don't find Iron Crack feet, so there's a few combinations that are still quite powerful. And then of course our mana base with 18 snow-covered mountains and 4 copies of Faceless Haven, which can also be a nice win condition. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, we're just one combo piece away here, missing Death Bell Warcry. Also need a bit more red mana for Iron Crack feats and even the Fumarole, which I currently cannot cast. But most of the lands in the deck produce red. Opponent with a Temple of Epiphany. And a World Tree, so opponent's going deep. Can definitely cast Awakening, getting rid of Nexus. Could be a matchup where Fumarole's not particularly useful, in which case we can get rid of it too. Aha, uh -huh, so this is a Tibal's Trickery deck. Let's see what they hit. They hit Chromatic Orrery. Yeah, it's pretty good. Although at least it doesn't kill us right away. Another Tibbles Trickery. Wow. Opponent's got a pretty lucky hand with double trickery, double zero mana card. Although this time they bricked, hitting Stone Coil and another Thermal Script. Alright, so definitely a matchup where I can get rid of Fumarole. Maybe should have gotten rid of Haven since we still needed extra red mana. But yeah, we drew into the combo, so... Turn 4 Nexus, turn 5 Feet plus Warcry. Let's see what they can do to disrupt it. Cast a Genesis Ultimatum, sure. Finds Dream Trawler and a Sika, God of the Tree. And that's fine. And now it's our turn. Yeah, our opponent should have killed us. But they left the window open for Death Bell Warcry. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got Maze Mind Tome as a nice way to find our missing pieces. Prophecy can get rid of Dragon potentially. And Fumarole plus Tome is also a combo. So not sure yet if I want to scry with Tome here. Facing maybe a snow deck here. Blue-green with Ascendant Spirits. Make that two. Alright, so I think I will scry for now. Frostbite seems okay, although I do need to start finding some combo pieces. Just finding removal is maybe not a way to do this. And then for now we'll draw. And then I can Fumarol plus Activate Tomb. That's reasonable. Alright, 
so we've got feet, still missing mask, and our death battle war cry. Although maybe this is a game where we just start beating down with our goldspan dragon. Probably start by drawing with tomb and then casting our prophecy. Alright, so I can probably get rid of one land. Kill God of Winter. Alright, there's Yudaro. Could also just cast Yudaro next turn. Not sure what the snow deck can do about it. Opponent is going to level up Ascendant Spirits. Alright, there's Mask, so I guess I would only be missing Death Bell Warcry, although I have two creatures in hand already. So maybe this is just Goldspan Dragon, make a treasure, draw with Tomb. That seems okay. Opponent could potentially kill Goldspan if they have the Blizzard Brawl and level up Ascendant Spirit once more. But that's okay. So good a 4 4 spirits. And an avalanche caller instead. Can turn lands into 4 4 creatures. Opponent stays back. I guess we'll just take our draw step. Another tome is nice. So probably draw. And then could trade my gold span. I could for six man. I guess we can't quite cast Idaro. I can cycle Idaro since we're so close to comboing off. So maybe start there. And then I can play another tomb and could trade to get another treasure. Probably better off waiting. And then for now it can hold off the 1-3 at least. If they try and kill Dragon we can still make use of our extra mana to activate Tomb. Might want to start holding some lands to get rid of if we draw Valakut Awakening. Alright, Blessing of Frost distributes four counters and draws two cards here. So now Caller can attack. Alright, now we will use Tome to draw. Prophecy. Do I want to scry or draw? Probably still draw. Right, fumeral, so I can Fumeral plus Prophecy to get rid of Spirit. Don't hate that. Then we'll draw first. Alright, there we go. So we should be able to combo next turn. And then for now... I guess we can Prophecy, get rid of a land. Attack, play our Mask with Nexus. And next turn we should have it. At 17, feeling pretty safe. So worst case scenario, we draw into one of our remaining creatures. So on upkeep, I can scry with Tome. And then if one of those creatures is on top, we can bottom it. And if not, we'll keep the card. Spirits, that's fine. Sir Point's tapped out. Oh, 
upkeep scry and mask with nexus is fine to keep on top all right could just hard cast or war cry but this is cooler One, two, three. And that's game. 16 damage from Yudaro, thanks to a Bosch doubling the damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got our two combo pieces, just missing the mana to cast them. And maybe need to find a way to get rid of a Bosch, although can potentially still win with the other three creatures. Ooh, wow. Iron Crack feeds. Are we looking at a turn 5 kill, potentially? I sure hope so. Tome can guarantee our land drops to an extent. And I don't know if Snow Covered Plains is going to have many ways to disrupt our combo. Youthful Valkyries is some sort of angel deck. This is part of the theme boosters. So... Not a card you're going to encounter in Limited. I guess my opponent could have the God that makes our Snow Lands come into play tapped. That would be unfortunate. Blue-White. Alright, it's just a Righteous Valkyrie. They could definitely kill us before we get to turn 5 if they've got a good start, but... Turn 5 is probably the best we can do. So is this turn, I guess I can just play Tapped Awakening, or I can cast it to get rid of a Bosch. Let's take our draw step. Another feat. So yeah, I think we'll just cast Awakening, getting rid of Feet and a Bosch. And that should hopefully draw us into some untapped land. You can still scry with Tome. Maybe the opponent respects a Sweeper and doesn't overextend, which buys us more time. Cloudkin, so... Appears to be blue white flyers. Alright, we'll take four. And then we'll scribe before casting. Awakening. Mountain's fine. So these two can go. And then I think I'll scry again since I don't want to draw into one of the remaining creatures if I can avoid it. Um, yeah, I guess Dome is fine. We've got all the pieces we need here for the turn 5 kill. So we just want to keep any non-creatures on top. Alright, let's see if we can pull off the turn 5. I hope we don't die this turn. But even if they manage to get above 27, we would be only taking 12. Maybe 13. Resplendent Marshal. But no creatures in the graveyard. Supponents at 23. They're scheduled to kill us next turn. So let's gain a little bit of life. And keep Mask with Nexus on top. Alright, hopefully no counter spell. Oh wow, a lofty denial. Well, that's disappointing. And now we're probably dead. And even if we don't die this turn, we would have to top deck another Iron Crack feat to have a chance. And that's not an Iron Crack feat. Alright, that's too bad. They had a counter spell. That's definitely one way to beat us. So, yeah, nothing I can do. Let's see if we were close to drawing another Iron Crack feat. Frostbite's not gonna do it. And an Awakening. Alright, GG's. We didn't have any cheap removal this time around, so just a well-placed counter spell was enough to beat us. On to the next one. 
or on the draw with uh, Fine Hand. Maze Mind Tome can help find the missing pieces here. Facing an Evolving Wilds. Not sure if I'm gonna cast Smashing yet. So we'll just play a regular land for now. Green White and the Lotus Cobra, which is gonna die to this Fire Prophecy. And then can probably get rid of one land. Next turn, I can maybe play Maze Mind Tomb. Don't have any cards I really want to discard with Awakening yet. Don't have any redundant combo pieces or creatures. Although I guess I can use Awakening to get rid of Awakening. I think we would rather uh, play Tome here. Could also Smashing for one on Cobra, maybe that's safer. Not give the opponent a huge mana advantage, especially with Fabled Passage. And then next turn I can play Tome and activate. Start accumulating a few extra cards. And then we'll have a better idea what to get rid of with Valakut Awakening. So opponent on Naya, and a Migration Path. So this could be a ramp deck, looking to ramp into Phylath, maybe Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. At least Ugin can get rid of my Maskwood Nexus. So I mean, I guess we couldn't quite combo next turn, since we're missing an untapped fifth land if we were to draw Death Bell Warcry. So for now, probably play Tome and draw instead of playing Maskwood. Seems okay. Maybe scry on upkeep. All right, it's going to be a Valakut exploration instead. And nothing else. All right, Terror, I don't really want. We'll scry. Uh, do we want a smashing? Not really. All right, so... I think for now, probably play Nexus, play a Tapped Awakening. So we have land 5, which we still want, and then next turn I can Awakening, getting rid of all the cards we don't need, maybe after drawing with Tome. Fable Passage for two Exploration Triggers. Cultivates. We'll give them one more. So opponents ramping, looking for action. They have a lot of basic lands, so I do think Phylath is likely to be in their deck. Scorching Dragonfire we don't care about. And another Migration Path cast. So we'll be taking 4 damage here, end of turn, from Exploration. See a Felidar Retreat as one of their win conditions too. Alright, well, I guess uh, we've got the combo here. Although Tower of the Peaks is in hand, which means that... I'll only have Hidaro, Goldspan, or Bosch, but that's still more than enough for lethal. So yeah, let's go for it. Get to hit for 12, but it's doubled by a Bosch. So 24 damage, even without Terror of the Peaks. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Plenty of early interaction. Iron Crank feats as one of the combo pieces and then Awakening can help find the missing ones. Facing a Temple of Mystery. So if this is a matchup where we're not gonna need creature removal, we can just get rid of all of them. Very 
beanstalk for ramp. Alright, so it doesn't look like I'm gonna need a ton of spot removal here. So we'll cast a big awakening, getting rid of most of my hand. But we can wait and see what else they do. If they play a Tower of the Peaks, then probably want to hang on to Fumeral. It's going to be a Quake Bringer. So I guess it's a Teamer Giants deck. Alright, I'll hang on to Fumeral then, but the rest can go. And then probably get rid of all my lands too. Since we'll probably draw into more. Alright, so Fumeral into Mask. We've got a Redundant Ironcrack feat. So can maybe get rid of it with Prophecy. And then, yeah, we're just waiting to draw Deathbell Warcry for the win. Can deal 6 damage to a creature with Frostbite and Prophecy. So Tectonic Giant seems like a fine target. Or we can Maze Mind Tome and start drawing. Now let's Prophecy Frostbite first. Opponent does get a bit of card advantage here, but that's okay. Finds a land. Alright. We'll be scrying towards Death Bell Warcry. Life total still at 20. So don't hate my position. Just gotta avoid drawing into our creatures. Opponent keeps ramping. Now my opponent could have some instant speed removal. We saw Squash. Can potentially take out one of my creatures in response to all the various triggers, but that shouldn't matter too much. And an invasion of the giants on the third chapter can give their giants a nice discount. Alright, so let's see if we can find Warcry. I should probably just take my draw step and draw with Tome. Alright, found a Terror of the Peaks. So... Is that one we potentially want to shuffle back? And then for now... Probably just make a token with Nexus. Opponent reveals a second Quake Bringer. At least our Nexus tokens are every creature type. So that means that if they have the 5 mana Battle of Frost they won't be able to wipe away my tokens. Another feat. I mean, I could play the Tower of the Peaks, it's just very likely to die. So it doesn't feel very productive. Alright, Awakening is perfect. So might as well do that now. Alright, still no war cry. Definitely okay chumping here. Just to preserve our life total. And if we're getting to the point where we need to top deck next turn, I might have to just cry with Tome, although let's see if we scry with Tome, and let's say we top deck another awakening. I can still cast Awakening and then feed into War Cry for the win. So the scry might still be better than draw. On the off chance that we find Awakening. Mimic to copy Beanstalk. So we'll jump and we're probably going to be dead next turn. I can gain for up to 20. We're going to take 2 
but my opponent can attack for a ton of damage. Maybe making a token will keep me alive. So I think scrying is the way to go. I guess we don't even gain a life because of Quakebringer. It's a detail I forgot. So let's draw. Alright, there's Awakening. So, Awakening, get rid of... I could get rid of both lands, but I still need an untapped land to be able to feed into Warcry. So I should probably hang on to one mountain here. Ah, sadly didn't find it. I can feed plus smashing. Alright. Take out Beanstalk and Quakebringer. And hopefully that buys us an extra draw step to find some Death Bell Warcry. We're at four. No, I didn't get there. Although Prophecy gives us a redraw, so we get to sweat once again. And a fumarole. Yeah, I think this is the end of the line. Close game. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Missing Mask with Nexus and maybe Iron Crank Feet for additional mana, but a lot of early removal and card selection. Facing a Catria Triome, maybe a Ramp deck. In which case, probably not gonna need too many of these burn spells. Although, Jolrael is a fine Prophecy target. And then I can probably ditch maybe another Prophecy. Fumarol is quite synergistic with Tome. Although the effect from Prophecy to put a card back could be more useful. Alright, I'll get rid of one Fumarol. Play Tome. Ooh, opponent's got a wilt to kill it. Well, that could have also killed my mask with Nexus, so I guess that worked out. Keep a second tome on top. So this looks like a teamer draw two deck. They might have some other draw two payoffs like Joel Ryle, as we see Iron Crank Pyromancer. So next turn I can Fumarole, play Tome, and still draw with Tome, so that works out perfectly. Alright, I've got the next creatures covered. Cycles Yidaru. So they've got some cycling synergy in there too. And then I'll just take my draw step, since we're gonna draw with Tome. And pass a turn. 
sign calls a barrier breach. Okay. And they've got some uh, strange ones in there. A mythos of Iluna to copy my tomb. Alright. Just take my draw. And draw again. Alright, Awakening is nice. So we can ditch some of these cards we don't need. Can probably cast it end of turn. Could also hit with Faceless Haven, just doesn't seem too productive at the moment. Doesn't look like my opponent's playing any counter spells that I need to worry about. Another Mythos, sure. So our opponent stepped out. There's a chance we can just kill him next turn. And get rid of everything except Warcry. Alright, well. Next turn we can go for it. And I've got backup copies of Mask with Nexus in case they deal with the first one. And then can maybe scry an upkeep to guarantee not drawing into one of our win conditions. Opponent goes digging. Field of Ruin shouldn't matter too much. So, I guess we'll make a token and then upkeep Scry. They can make me shuffle with the Field of Ruin. So that's one thing they could still do. And I guess we still need land 8. So, do need to find one more land to cast Warcry. Alright, there we go. One, two, three, four. And my opponent doesn't even let the animation finish, but they know what's incoming. Sweet, so overall, we had some pretty fun games with our masked minotaurs. And yeah, it's not the most competitive deck out there, as you can imagine, a three card combo essentially, or a very slow two card combo, but the snow synergies do make it a pretty nice control deck in the early turns, giving you some cheap removal and Fumarole especially combining nicely with Maze Mind Tome, which is kind of the glue that holds the deck together. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.